How to have a balanced offense in Madden 18. What's up guys, my name is Cody and in today's video I want to answer one of the questions that I got I got a couple times this last week and that is how do you have a balanced offense? What does a balanced offense look like in Madden 18? And the answer really is very simple as I throw a nice pick six here. Um, the answer is really very simple. The key with balance in Madden 18, the key with balance in any any season of Madden is really can you can really boil it down to a couple of simple recipes and the first is that you have to read what the defense is doing okay that's critical we've talked about that a lot uh, as far as far as how to read what the defense is doing and then react to it but one of the keys that a lot of people don't understand is they will run the ball they think that having a balanced offense means that they should run the ball into a defense that's not going to be good to run the ball into right i mean it's going to be a you know, like if they came out in a 4-6 normal cover 2 invert and you end up saying, well, you know what, I think I should run inside zone. And that's not really balanced, okay? That, what that is is crazy. Um, so anyways, guys, what I want to do today is I want to help you try to kind of see some of the things that I do to maintain a balanced offense. And here's here's the gist of what it, what it means. What balanced offense really means is it means it's an offense that is trying to keep – that's like one of the craziest things that's ever happened – but it's an offense that's trying to keep the defense off balance uh, with some of their play calls. So, so the first thing that you can do to have a balanced offense in Madden 18 is to know when to run your counter plays. We've talked about this a little bit, but basically what you want to do is you want to have two plays from the same formation. Another thing that you want to have is you want to have a constraint theory play. So this is something like a slip screen or a verticals or you know, a play action pass or something like that. That's going to, what it's basically going to do is when the defense starts to over pursue, it's going to take advantage of them. So for example, one of the best ways, and here's how you get to that. So what you need to do is you need to ask yourself, what is the defense going to do to stop me? What, what are the, what are the plays? What are the, what are the strategies that they're going to have to employ to stop what I'm doing? Okay. And this is something that a lot of people don't do. And it's a common mistake. So one of the things that I've learned is to ask that question, not what good, what plays are good, but what plays actually complement the plays that I'm already going to use. So I know the main play for me is going to be PA post. I know that's the power play for me. That's the, that's the bread and butter. That's the play that I want to run if I can. So the question then becomes, well, how are they going to stop PA post? So if you, you go through and you answer that question, what you come out with is they're probably going to go some type of man-to-man -man coverage, and then they're going to use her the middle of the field, right? That's that's the that's the, probably the best way to stop it. If you go man, or if you go Tampa two, and then you you know get really aggressive with the underneath stuff, but by and large you're going to see some type of defense like that. So then the question becomes, well, what does that defense leave open? And one of the things that I really came across was that it forces them to run some type of cover three, cover two man, which is going to then leave open some deep routes and some different post patterns that I can use. So once I figured that out, then what I was able to do was work backwards. And then you ask yourself, what does that leave open? And you just kind of keep uh, tinkering with it. And what you find is then that forces them into a blitz, which then you can run your slip screens. Again, this is a constraint theory type of play where you're going to over aggressive safeties. You're going to be able to use this. Um, gosh dang it, I got roasted. So, so the key with balance, in my opinion, is is to basically trap trap the defense. One of the things that um, the the Green Bay Packers would do is they would run big power sweeps, and we all know it's a famous famous thing called the Lombardi sweep. We all know that. But what, would the, what that would do is it would force the defense to then adjust. And so they would have to basically play wider to stop the, the power sweep. So they would have to blitz more up the field, get deeper, that kind of thing. And so what ended up happening as a result was the, the defense would run themselves out of inside running plays. And so what, what Lombardi would do is it's what they called the inside trap play, where they would take a um, – basically they would take a guard and – and they would pull him, and what would happen would be the, the defensive tackle would literally run himself out of the play, and they would be able to run in behind the guard that they had just pulled. Okay, so it looks exactly like the power sweep, but now they're running the opposite direction right up into where the guard would over-pursue himself out of the play. So the reason I'm saying that 
is because it's very similar with the mechanics that you want to use to keep balance in your offense. You want to wait for the defense, really try to predict when the defense is going to is going to basically try to throw themselves off balance. And so this is this is a little bit of an art form, but what you can really tell is once the defense starts kind of trying to bring a lot of people up to the line of scrimmage, that's kind of my cue that they're they're really getting tired of the of the plays that I've been running. They're trying to blitz me. Normally when someone dials up the pressure, it means they're getting angry. It doesn't mean they're calm. Um, normally the more the pre the more the blitzes come, the more pressure that you're under. And so for me, what I can do with that is I can really beat that well with some of my different plays like my slip screen or my verticals play or um, you know my Z spot, different things like that that I have to maintain that balance that we're talking about. With the running game, what you want to do, and again, one of the one of the really powerful things with this is to, for keep and balance sake, what you need to do is you need to run everything out of the same formation. Because when you run everything out of the same formation, they can't tell what play you're calling. You could be calling PA posts from your look, from your look, okay? So they can't really tell any of that stuff. All they can tell is he's in the same formation and he's pissing me off because he, I just can't get a read on him, right? That's that's why I suggest running the same plays. It's not because I think, you know, that by some me measure that – you know, it's, it's smarter to have a, I mean, I do think it's smarter to have a simpler playbook, but what I'm, the real key is to have it look the same. And if it looks the same, that's where it's really powerful. So again, maintaining balance as far as where the run game comes in, well, it's when they give you a look. So like right here, this is, be back the guys out. He's playing the pass all the way because I haven't shown the run at all yet. So now I got an inside zone check down and I can get it, you know, and, and you see how, this puts him in a big time, um, a big time problem, because he can't really keep up. He can't. He's off balance because my offense is so balanced. It's so okay. I can run. I can pass. I can, you know. And that's one. That's another thing as far as achieving balance goes. Is you need to pick a playbook. You need to pick a system or a formation where you have a good quick audible, a good set of quick audibles. Quick audibles are critical. Because at the line of scrimmage, I can now go to three to four different plays, which is very powerful. If you don't have that, it really limits your balance. It limits your offensive ability and stability, and it makes it much more difficult to score. So anyways, guys, those are some of the tips that I have for staying balanced in Madden 18 when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. If you have questions uh, related to Madden 18, please leave those questions in the comments below. And if you would like to have the full breakdown for my offensive playbook, then I would suggest checking out the premium membership. You can find that in the description below, and that will give you access to not just my offense, but it'll give you access to all of my content for Madden 18. So you can really check that out. I think it's a pretty good video.